The New York Knicks in the first game outside the All-Star break. They beat the Philadelphia 76ers 110-96. It got a little bit dicey at one point in the third quarter. And then the Sixers tried to make a run in the fourth. But Jalen Brunson essentially closed the door with the help alongside two guys that you might not think made a huge difference tonight. But it was when Deuce McBride was subbed into the game late in the fourth quarter and the constant effort in game-changing plays that Precious Achua made that helped the Knicks get this win and cement themselves as that fourth seed in the Eastern Conference. You're watching Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. The Knicks, they really played well, I would say, for about 40 of the 48 minutes. There was a stretch in that third quarter where they really couldn't score and they kind of struggled to. But overall for the night, you shot 48% from the field, 44% from three, and you held another team to under 100 points without Mitchell Robinson, and without OG and Anobi, without uh, Julius Randle, and really without Isaiah Hartenstein. He only played about 15 minutes in today's game. One of the bigger storylines in this game, though, was Boyan Bogdanovich absolutely catching fire from downtown in that second quarter. I believe he made five, well, he went six of six from three, but he made like five threes in that second quarter, and it was just catch and release, catch and release, easy work for Boyan. He then hit another three in that third quarter, but this is why you go and trade for a guy like Bogey. You're looking for somebody to score the basketball while Brunson's off the floor, and he did his job to a tee tonight. There was even a couple of times where he would jab step, get in the lane, get into a post-up, follow a jumper. There was another time he caught it in the corner and just did that veteran kind of lean-in move like that, bought some space, and rose up and hit it from downtown. Boyan Bogdanovich did a great job tonight, and he really helped the Knicks get this win. Maybe the game ball, though, should go to Josh Hart, man. Um, I've been critical of the way Josh Hart has played this year because he has really just kind of been a liability at times on the offensive end. But he came out tonight, and he was aggressive, and he was confident, and he played with a different type of swag to him. 13 shots tonight for Josh Hart. That may be a season high for him, but 18 points. We know he's going to recklessly and relentlessly attack the glass. He did that, 12 rebounds for him, had three assists. But it's the fact that he shot 40% from three. There's going to be a time in the playoffs where Josh Hart is going to have to hit a big time three. And I feel like, not just tonight, but the last couple games leading up to the All-Star break, he started to get that confidence going once again. I'm not asking him to be an elite three-point shooter. Just be league average. And when your number's called and you're open, don't be afraid to knock it down. And I like the way he played overall. Maybe he gets my game ball. Another guy that could get a game ball is Presh the Chua. I mean... A lot of people thought that Achua was just a throw-in trade. A throw-in in the trade. I'm a lot of people. That's what I thought. But you can make the argument that he was as big a part of the trade as anyone that was involved in this deal. Like with the injuries that have come about, Achua has stepped in in a major way. Offensive rebound after offensive rebound after extra effort play, extra effort play. Like the dude has been special. Anything more than we could have asked for, Achua. You may have found a home with the New York Knicks. The fact that you won this game by 14 points and you were up by 26 and Jalen Brunson made five shots. Yes, he had 21 points. He was fouled repeatedly. Should have been to the line probably five, six more times. 12 assists. I know he had like seven turnovers, a little bit sloppy there. Got to tighten it up. Thought he got a little bit too cute with some of them trying to make some no-look passes. But at the end of the day, even in that fourth quarter when the game got tight, it felt like Jalen Brunson... When he checked back in, was like, all right, let's calm down. I'll control the game. I'll control the flow. And, and, and he really did that for the New York Knicks. But he shoots 27.8%. And then you have Dante DiVincenzo, who's been your second scoring option since the Randall injury. He shoots 40%, and you win the game by 14 points. Um, you got a whole lot of options. And I thought, for the most part, DiVincenzo did a pretty good job on Maxi. He caught fire in that third quarter. But it really came down to when Deuce McBride was subbed into that fourth quarter. He did a great job on Maxi, And that is the type of substitution that Tom Thibodeau should give all the credit in the world for. When it happened in live time, I'm like, ah, I thought the Knicks needed some more scoring. Nope. T Tibbs knew what to do. He threw out the aggressive, relentless energy player in Deuce. Did a good job on Maxi in the fourth. Deuce also got a big offensive rebound that ended up in a Dante DiVincenzo three in the fourth quarter. He had a steal, had a breakaway dunk. Uh, Deuce, I thought, really, really played well. And look, yeah, he had a good game. But at the end of the day, the Knicks made him work for it. 11 to 24, that's, that's good. 
but that's below Tyrese Maxey's season average, and that's all you can really hope to do when you're trying to slow down these really, really um, efficient scores. I couldn't think, though, throughout that whole game about how good the Knicks are going to be when they are healthy and how that stacks up across the NBA. So I want you guys to try to help me out because I'm trying not to get drunk off the Knicks Kool-Aid. I'm afraid I'm already there. Maybe you guys can uh, help me out. The Knicks are the blank best team in the East when healthy. When healthy, Knicks are the blank best team in the East. I'm going to say second, and it might just be first, but I want to hear from you. My guy OG says, what's our ceiling if we lose Randall for the rest of the season? I am a little bit worried about Julius Randall and his injury. The fact that he got hurt at the end of January and surgery hasn't yet been ruled out kind of concerns me a little bit. But to your question, what's our ceiling if we lose Randall for the rest of the season? Everybody else healthy? Robinson back, OG back. I still think it's conference finals. I still think you can get to the conference finals um, if everybody's healthy but Randall. I don't know if you can win the East, though, without Julius Randall. But, hey, once you're in that series and once things get started, anything could happen. But I, I, I still think you can get to the Eastern Conference Finals. I think you could beat the Bucks without Randall. I think you could beat Indy without Randall. Um, but I don't want to live in that world. As much as I am a little bit worried about Randall's playoff performance, I still know how critical he is to this team's success if they want to do things this year that this franchise has not done in 20-something years. We'll get to more questions coming up. But first, you guys got to check out our proud sponsor, Prize Picks. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS, promo code CLNS, the number one daily fantasy sports app in North America. All you do is create a lineup of two to six players, and you simply choose more or less on the projected stat total for the game that prize picks. Selects NBA, NFL, college football, college basketball, hockey, PGA Tour, NASCAR, and so much more. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. It's fun. It's exciting. And you can win real money. And if you use the promo code CLNS, they will match your first deposit up to $100. Man, Johnson, you what up, man? What do we do about Boyan and Burks this offseason? So Boyan is under contract through next season. Burks is a free agent after this year. Uh, I'm sure they would like to retain Burks. Maybe you sign him to uh, a, a three, four, five million dollar deal. You'll have his bird rights, I believe. Um, but it's not like a priority, I think, to re-sign Burks when it comes to Boyan. Uh, I'm, his name will be brought up in trade conversations because that twenty-plus million-dollar salary uh, is so valuable in, in trading for a star. As y'all, as we all know, you have to match that salary in going to outgoing very closely, at least close to like five percent. Um, I think Boyan could be on the Knicks next year, but if there is a trade for a star, Boyan will probably be involved due to his expiring salary of twenty million dollars. Burks, I'm sure they'd like to bring him back, and uh, by they, I mean Tom Thibodeau because we know how much he loves him. But at the end of the day, I don't think it will be one of the higher priorities for the Knicks this offseason. John Pettit, Marsh, is there anything the Knicks can do to have the NBA to get a fair called game? JB's getting getting beat up too much. I, I watched the game last night, and it's like I see Tyrese Maxey drive, and he gets a foul, and he does the same. Brunson and Maxey are very similar. Brunson's got better footwork, and he scores in the paint more, but they do the same things. Like when they get downhill, like and they do the similar moves, and like Maxi got foul call after foul call after foul call, and it's felt like for about two weeks now, uh, Brunson has not been officiated in a fair light. Uh, the guy in the month of February, I want to look this up real quick. Jalen Brunson in the month of February, he has the second most points in the paint in the NBA, right behind Giannis. I believe it was 18 points in the paint. 18 points in the paint in the month of February for Jalen Brunson, right? So let's look uh, in the month of February how many times he's shooting free throws. Because if you are doing all of that and you have the second most points in the paint per game in the month of February, why is he only attempting seven free throws a night? So you're telling me the guy that's six foot and living in the paint is only getting seven free throws a night. Where Giannis... 
where he was the only person, and it was like a point more that Giannis was averaging in the paint in the month of February. You look at Giannis in the month of February, he is shooting hmm, nine and a half free throws attempted. So the bigger guy gets rewarded for more contact than the smaller guy that's living in the paint off of dribble drives. If someone can make it make sense to me, please do so. Because the way that the NBA has been officiating Jalen Brunson for about a month now is, and I hate saying this, it's unfair. It's not right. They need to fix it. Just be, just be fair. Because it's not fair right now. Jay Liv, what up, bro? Can they win the chip without Randall coming back? So long as they get OG and Mitch Rob back. Do they need Mitch Rob? I don't think the Knicks can win the championship without Julius Randle. Um, I think they can get to the conference finals, and then the chips fall where they may. I'm never going to say never, right? Like, yeah, they can, but I think it's more likely than they need him. They need him. Um, do they need Mitch Rob back? I think they do. I think they do need Mitchell Robinson back. Um, just because if you could have 48 minutes of elite rim protection in Robinson and Hartenstein, that allows your defense as well with OG to be very, very good. And then you factor in a guy like Precious. Does he become your backup power forward? Uh, uh, I, it's going to be so, so interesting to see how Tips handles this. I think for the Knicks to win a championship, though, they need everybody healthy. Uh, I want to go into war with all my guns loaded. Um, Never going to say never, but I would like to see them go in with a full deck of cards. I think they need Mitch Rob back because I, we kind of forget about it. Go watch those highlights of round one against the Cavs. I think Mitchell Robinson was the second best player on the Knicks in that series. He dominated Jared Allen all series long. He did such a great job on contesting Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell at the rim. Mitch changed those games, man. Um, yeah, they need him. They do need him. Can they survive without him? Sure. But I'd rather not. I'd rather go into war with all my all my weapons loaded. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed. We'll be live on the channel on Saturday for the Celtics game. That one is going to be a whole lot of fun. So subscribe, turn your notifications on, and join us Saturday if you're looking for the number one spot on YouTube to watch a Knicks game with 15,000 people at minimum.